anyone like a cup of tea? Perhaps later. You all right, Dad? Come on, Alf, here. Sit him down here. Sit him down here, that's it. I know what he needs. Mm. Well, why do you take her, eh? It's all the villains in the world, murders, rapists, sucker hooligans. Why do you have to take her, eh? What's she done here to take her? Never mind, Mr Garnet. Try to bear up. Here you are, Elf. Get this down, ya. Yeah. <clears throat> He's upset. Bound to be. Hmm. We all are. <laughs> that foreman of the Undertakers was hanging about out there. I think he expected a tip. Tip? I'll give him a tip. The tip of my boot. <laughs> Six lace holes up, he's Jaxi. <laughs> wants to reduce his prices, that's what he wants to do. Bloody crook he is. Take advantage of bereaved, fleecing poor people like 300 pounds for the coffee, 300 pounds for carrying it, 40 pounds for a car. Sandwich is only round the corner because I walked it. <laughs> Carry the rare assaults. I'll never use that farm again, not as long as I live, I won't. <laughs> Talk about the cost of living, what about the cost of dying? Yes, makes you think. Still, if it's any consolation, it could have been a lot dearer next year. <laughs> you had a bit of insurance, though, didn't you? <clears throat> not the money, Arthur. Oh, dear. I don't begrudge the money. It was a nice funeral, though. I think she'd have been pleased. She wouldn't have been unhappy. He charged enough, though. A sad loss. But it went smooth. It went smooth enough. She'll be missed. Mm. I think she'd have been pleased. I think she'd have been pleased if, if she could have seen the way she went. <laughs> <laughs> I've done my best. He could have done more, though. Bloody undertaker. <laughs> Money I paid him. <laughs> Don't you worry, Mr. Garnet. She wouldn't have minded. She'd have been very happy. God rest us soul. All of a sudden. Wasn't many turned up. No, it, it wasn't the best of turnouts. They ain't got many relations. Not got many friends. <laughs> <laughs> There'd have been more turned up if it had been him we was burying. <laughs> You can't blame him, I suppose, if he does. They like this. Oh, well, hope he don't, that's all. Don't worry. I'll look after him. I know. Must be rotten for him, no? I mean, they've been together now how long? Must be about 45 years. Must have thought a lot of her. Must have loved her. I mean, in his own way. Mm, I suppose so. But you notice he's bought more booze than flowers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to manage. They took her half of the paints and straight off, didn't they? And the 30 quid she got for sitting in that chair. I mean, I'm, I'm more than 50 pound worse off, aren't I? <laughs> oh, you're manager. I mean, there's only one of you now, isn't there? That's it, Mr Garnet. Look on the bright yeah. side. You're on your own now. Despite what they say, two cart livers cheaply as one. I know that. I don't know where she puts it all. Never mind, there's only one of me. I'm 50 quid down the drain with her going, aren't I? Hey? There might only be the one of me, but it's no saving, not to tell you half. Might be only one of me, it's still got to cost the same for my electric, isn't it? Hey? There might only be one of me sitting there, but I've still got to burn the same light as when there was two of us sitting there. Don't matter if there's ten of us sitting there, fifty even. Still got to burn the same electric light the room, the same heat to warm it. And if half of them leave, it don't get no cheaper, does it? Hey? If all of them leave, it's only me. It's still going to cost me the same, don't it? Look, Arthur, I'm sitting here watching the telly. I'm on my own watching the telly. It's still 
Cost the same as when she was sitting here watching it with me. I don't get no cheaper now she's gone, does it? Still got to cost me the same licence fee. I don't get no cheaper now because there's only one of me watching it instead of two, do I? Oh, dear me, no. Look, down the road, there's ten of them watching the bloody packies. Ten of them watching them. <laughs> the same film on there as I'm watching. It don't cost them no more than it costs me because there's ten of them, does it? No. <laughs> There's only one of me sitting here watching it. I don't get no cheaper, do I? It's still going to cost me the same licence fee for one of me watching it. And when there's ten of them watching it, and they talk about bloody economics. <laughs> Who do? Your government, the parliament. Fact like they know about economics. I wouldn't trust them with a jam jar full of fruit bits. <laughs> <laughs> they know as much about economics as bloody Marigold does, dear. Why not? Shut up, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, not about economics, half. I'll tell you about economics, see? Listen. When a rich man dies, see, the ones who's left behind is invariably better off, right? I mean, you know, they try to look unhappy, yeah, you know. Try not to look too pleased about all the money they've been left, but, boy, I mean, perhaps they are unhappy, you know, because it's on the cars, the one they lost was close, you know, maybe so, well, maybe they liked him even, but the point is... They're not out of pocket on the deal. They're better off financially because they inherit what is left. You, you inherit what else is left? No, she never had nothing. All she had... You've had already. <laughs> <laughs> All she had, what she could leave me, was her pension and what she got for sitting in that wheelchair. What she would have left me, I know she would have done willingly, but she couldn't, could she, because the... Bloody government grabbed it back over! Ain't fair. It's not supposed to be fair, Al. Look, when the Queen dies, God forbid. <laughs> when the Queen dies, see, Charlie becomes king, right? Because he inherits. And Be die, you're Queen. Shut up. Because <laughs> he inherits, right? But I mean, Philip. He, he's not worse off, is he? He don't have to draw his horns in. He still sits down to his same breakfast. He still his pipe's full. He don't have to worry where his next pint's coming from, do he? Look, a better similar. Mm. The Queen Mum. Mm -hmm. Right, she lost her husband, didn't she? But she didn't lose half the money to go with it, did she? No, all right, she had to move out of Buck House, but they found her out. They found her house just as good, didn't they? Clarence House. Clarence House. But she's still got a box at your Royal Ascot, and she's still got a cabin in a Royal Yacht, and she don't have to live in Clarence House with a supplemented benefit with a DHSS telling her how many bars of electric she can burn during the winter. <laughs> you shouldn't have to. No, because she's a wonderful, wonderful woman. But never should I have to. I could live cheaper on my own. It's not all that fun being rich, Alf. I mean, in a way, we're lucky we've got no money. Oh, yeah, I've heard that one before, Arthur. That's what people who have got money tell people who ain't got it. No, I, I mean, if you're a rich man, and a man your age, who ain't got long... <laughs> a, man, a man near the end, then you'll see the vultures gathering. You know how greedy people can be, especially relatives, when they know you're more worth to them dead than you are alive. I mean... All your wealth does then is give them a better interest in your death, doesn't it? I mean, you get ill, you take your bed, you're at their mercy. You're going to be scared. You're going to be sh terrified to eat or drink anything they prepared for you. You'll starve for the fear of being poisoned by them. Ah, ain't all that fun being rich, Alf. You don't have to be rich. You could be a poor person with relatives you have to support, eating you out of house and home. We could also give you a strong interest in their death. Uh, eating, eating... It's good to eat, but I shouldn't have to eat ham. Oh, the food is good, Mr. Garnet, but ham I shouldn't have to eat. Chicken is better, beef, salt beef on rye. If I should eat ham, it's a terrible thing. I eat to mourn your wife, but I shouldn't have to. A dietary law. So, I'm a criminal. 70 years old, I'm a criminal because I shouldn't be able to transgress who can see me? Who can tell I'm eating? <laughs> For 70 years, I've been strict. Now I am more liberal, so it's a terrible thing. Why should ham be such a crime? Why not pilchards? <laughs> bacon and eggs. Listen, if you can't have the bacon, who needs the eggs? <laughs> <laughs> the government killed her off, wasn't it, eh? 
We all know that. We all know who done it. They froze her out, didn't they? Like the firm you. She froze to death. Use the telephone, they said. Ring the DHSS. It's a bloody love. The phone was vandalised. Couldn't even find my Rita, could I? Anyway, you've got to be Scott of the Antarctic to find a bleeding phone. There's four foot of snow out there. There was. <laughs> Look, you wasn't here, you don't know. That was in Too February. much of me, I couldn't manage it. I ain't got no bloody slow shoes. Dad, that was in February. Mum only died last week. She never thawed out. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the summer, get over English winter. That's true, Alf. I'm sure there's parts of me still numb from last winter. Yeah, cold. Cold, coldest winter for 100 years, I said. Yeah. And your army and your navy, they would have been issued with special warm clothing. And rum rations, see? But us, your civilian populations, we expected to sail into unprotected. We should be given special winter money living in this country. Special winter money? Now, why not? For staying in residence, occupying and operating the country during the worst of winter months. And blimey, most of your wealth to do it all for into the sun well before Christmas they are. All with the swallows they are. <laughs> <laughs> Leaderless, this country is during the winter. Hmm. That's why you never get a war in the winter in this country. <laughs> you bloody laughing at us. Facts, isn't it? Facts. <laughs> no, you, it, all of our wars have all been summer wars, haven't they? <laughs> Just stop bloody giggling a minute, minute. You might learn something. You look in your history books. All our wars. Last war, First World War, your Falklands War. All them wars have started in the summer. And why? I'll tell you the why, Miss Giggle. Guts. I'll tell you the why, because there's no one bloody well here in the winter. <laughs> no one in authority, that is. No one that arranged to start a bloody war, is there? No, because they're, they're all off into the sun, off with the swallows, like he said. Get out of my bloody seat. Come on. Here, yeah, I could do with a swallow elf. Give us that bottle, will you? Yeah, that's a bit of a handicap, isn't it, Arthur? That, I mean, that's your drinking hand, isn't it? No, that, that's all right. I'm Amphi. Amphi? Amphi, you know, use the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we got Marigold and his mob over here, innit? Oh. Yeah! <laughs> Pack them all off to England, the politicians said. We'll have this tropical paradise to ourselves. Too good for your coons, this is. Too good for Marigold and his mob. <laughs> yeah, well, that will keep a few of them here, servants, you know. <laughs> put white coats on them. Get rid of the rest of them. Demolish all the shanty towns and put up a few five star hotels. And we'll spend the winter recess here. Hey! <laughs> Yeah, for the winter junkets. That's it. I can hear them now. I say, what a good idea. Sitting in the sun. Sitting in the sun, discussing the third world. I say, fellas, let's loosen our belts and make room for another blowout and see if we can sort out this Ethiopian famine. Yeah. Send this back. Send that back. Not enough meat on the lobster. The steak's too rare. The champagne's too warm. Yeah. <laughs> you won't get none of them back here till the weather warms up. Yeah, and we can sit here shivering. And dying in the cold, like my poor old stunt. The good woman she was, good wife and mother, but she was. And in your famous new technological age, what they're all talking about, she was left to sit here and bloody freeze to death. Might as well still be living in caves, all the good your new technological age done for her. <laughs> Ah, it's all rubbish anyway. Well, rubbish. God rest her soul. What of a shot? The kind of woman never lived. We had a plot for her from her mother, reserve special for her. It was smart, clean, and decent when we first had it, when we buried my father in it. Oh, you should see it now. <laughs> we had to bury my mother in it a few months ago. You should see it now. You think it was pigs buried there? <laughs> Blackies now, my sister said. It's them blackies, they're burying them here now. <laughs> See what's made the mess. <laughs> well, if it is, I said, 
If it is them, they're very in here. If it is Blackies, she's coming up. <laughs> Mum's not being left to lie here among Blackies, I said. No, she couldn't bear them when she was alive. She's not going to lay among them dead. They ruined our street. Well, they ain't going to ruin her grave. They ain't going to ruin her eternal rest. No, they ain't laying alongside of her. So I'll have her up. I'll have her up. And I'll lay her to rest somewhere else. They shouldn't let them over here. It's not their country. Not their cemetery. <laughs> if they must let them over here, at least send them back when they're dead. <laughs> we shouldn't be made to have them here for all eternity. God! Apartheid for the dead? How ignorant can you get? Look at it. White supremacy. Mm -hmm. Look at it. The master race. As thick as pig shit. <laughs> <laughs> when they were fighting the Nazis, they didn't realise they were on the wrong side. Mrs. Oh. Hollingberry. Oh. oh, I didn't know you were here. When you play God Save the Queen or Land of Hope and Glory on the piano, you have to use the white keys and the dark keys. <laughs> Look, I was born in this country. My mother and father was born in this country. For Christ's sakes, what do I have to do to become an Englishman? You've got to be a man for a start off, you bloody white poofter. <laughs> I you? am English. How can I not be English with a name like mine? Winston Spencer Churchill. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> I'm black English and you're white English. Well, whitish with black spots. Hot towels to get rid of your blackheads. Get in off me. <laughs> Tell me, Sonny, when did you find out you was a Schwarzer? <laughs> well, it was when I was a small boy. About the same time you found out you was a Jew boy, you know, when they tell you to get to the back of the bus. You know it was a Jew who freed all the slaves. Abraham Lincoln, a wonderful man. Abraham Lincoln, a Jew? Well, he wasn't bloody Irish, was he? <laughs> anyway, there wasn't his slaves to free. There was our, our coons, weren't they? <laughs> of course there was. They was oh. We had, like, a surplus of coons, all we <gasps> lolling about in our Africa, all oh. swinging in the bleating trees. And so you put them in chains and <laughs> sold them to America? They only chained them up because they kept running away. <laughs> <laughs> if they didn't, they, they was treated very well, our English slaves was. Oh, bro, you don't want to believe all them tales you hear. Oh, yeah, it was stamped on the export licence, wasn't yeah. it? These are English slaves, so they must be treated decently. Oh, they was, they was. They was only set of nice people, big houses, big, you know, and, and gentle folk. I mean, they, they didn't send any... Oh, and to the slums. We never had none round here. They we? was allowed to live in sheds at the bottom of the White Master's Garden, the way they do in South Africa now. You don't live in a bleating shed? Oh, You'd gosh. like that, wouldn't you? Having slaves to fetch and carry for you, and nice boys like Winston mm -hmm. running around after you. You'd have to run a bloody sight fast. Say, sir and madam. I, 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 I tell you, boss, I bet if I put on a white coat and carried a tray, I'd be real popular. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't I, boss? I wouldn't I, boss? I don't want to discuss it. I <laughs> respect Mr Garnet. Well, Mr Garnet, uh, I've got nothing against black people myself, per se, personally. I only hope you never have to have a transplant, Mrs Ollingbury. We've got a black dustman, as you know, we don't complain. We've got a black postman. He's all right. Cos if all your organs are as bigoted as you are, you won't stand a chance. They'd reject it. But black neighbours... You see, I don't mind, but if I want to sell my house... It's a funny thing, bigotry, Mrs Hollingbury. If you had a new heart set, oh, then all your other <laughs> organs might reject it and have nothing to do with it if they're as prejudiced as you are. See, my house is worth £36,000 in a white neighbourhood. I mean, they might say, yeah, that's a new heart they put in. It's not one of us. It's foreign. And then where would you be, Mrs Hollingbury? Dead. Another victim of prejudice and bigotry. <laughs> but ghetto prices, they tend to be lower. You see, I'm not a racist. I wouldn't want anybody else's bits and pieces sewn into me, thank you. <laughs> I can find myself out of pocket. People come to see the house, look it over, and they see blackies. <laughs> you see, it's not me, it's them. I mean... A man's going to pay £40,000 for a new house. He's going to be a bit fussy about his new neighbours. 
I mean, it's uh, worse than woodworm or dry rot when you come to sell house. I mean, a bit of rising damp you can get away with, but black neighbours. Now, you see how I'm thinking? Oh, yes. It's not me, it's a possible purchaser. I mean, I don't mind them. I mean, I'll enjoy a curry occasionally, won't I, dear? Well, if it's not too hot. It's even Chinese. We are cosmopolitan in that sense, aren't we, dear? I had an Asian lady in the next bed to me in hospital. She took it quite well. She oh, had a Jamaican yeah. nurse as well. Oh, now, we are broad-minded ourselves, aren't we, dear? Not like uh, Mrs. Hollingbury, your upstairs neighbour. <laughs> no, no, these are God's creatures. Uh, we were liberal and SDP, weren't we, before we became Tory, dear? No, what I'm trying to say, Mr Garnet, if he, the blackie... Oh, uh, let's call a spade a spade. <laughs> If, if he's going to be living with you, perhaps you could sort of keep him, uh, Undercover. In lower profile. You see, as householders, um, owner-buyers, so to speak, it wouldn't do us any good if the street became known for its, uh, high black profile. No offence. Oh, none taken, darling. <laughs> you know, we Jews used to lower the land values. We lowered all the land values in the whole of Ortonstone. And when they were low enough, my uncle Melvin bought them all up and he made a good profit. <laughs> you see, this is the problem with the Schwarzers. They're not clever. You haven't got the mouse. It is good to lower the land value, Sonny. We should only be able to lower the food prices. Come on, Mr. Garnet. Wake up, come on, wake up. Hey, Everybody's gone. <sighs> Rita tried to say goodbye to you, but she couldn't get any sense into you. <sighs> Where's Rita? She had to get back to Liverpool. Oh. She tried to say goodbye to you. Why did she say goodbye to me? You wouldn't wake up. What? Was I asleep? You was dead drunk. Oh, God. Hey, what? <laughs> oh. Where's he going tonight? You taking him with you? No, he's staying here. Don't worry, I'll make sure he's all right before I go. Well, he can't stay here. What? He lives here. I live here. I didn't mind him living down here when his wife was here, but now she's gone, we've only got the one door. I mean, there's nothing to stop him coming up my stairs. But I'm a woman on my own, and I'm not taking any chances, not with the likes of him. But you've got a door at the top. So it's not a strong door. It's not a street door. I can't bolt it. And when they've got the drink in them, then... <laughs> well, that door wouldn't hold a man turned animal with drink and flamed with drunken desires. <laughs> We've only got the one street door. Now, that arrangement was all right when Mrs Garnet was living here, but now she's gone, poor woman. Well, it's not decent. What are you talking about, not decent, you bloody silly old faggot? <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool with your daughter. I don't want to live in Liverpool. No, no, they won't have you, and I can't say I blame them. No. Well, I don't want you here. I live here, Mrs. I live here, you stupid old witch. <laughs> this is my house. I've got a rent book, can I? Don't shout at me. Heard enough of you shouting when your poor wife was alive. No. Oh, poor God. woman. I could write a book on you. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah and I, yeah. Would, I would too, for two pins. Oh, I yeah. Would, yeah. And I'll write a book on you. Yeah, and all. yeah. And that'll tell people what you are. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, at least I'll tell you, Sonny. I live here, Mrs. If anyone's going to move, it's you. Oh, well, we'll see about we that. We will see about that. Yes, yes we, will. we will. Can't you get him into a home? Look. What? I'll stay here tonight and I'll chaperone you. Two of you. You'll be safe. <laughs> Look, I'm a council social worker. You'll be all right. Well, <laughs> Better be. Don't neither of you come up these stairs. A bit more bloody fussing! <laughs> My Mrs. Pudding! Oh, Are you been trying to have it on with her or what? You touch her with a barge pole. <laughs> I'll sit to your bed. the old moo. we
Take care.